So does the perfect watch exist? Probably not. But is the idea of having a perfect watch a really worthwhile thing knowing? I think it actually is. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Let's get into it. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James. You're watching me and I'm talking about watches. And today I'm talking about perfect watches because the idea of getting a perfect watch is often in the back of our mind, chasing that perfect watch, always going for the next one. But there's a big issue with chasing a perfect watch and that is it probably doesn't exist. And the reasons why it doesn't exist is because the perfect watch for me is not the perfect watch for you. And the perfect watch for me today is probably not the perfect watch for me tomorrow or next week. Or well, the perfect watch that I buy today might be perfect. And then I start thinking about the next watch, the one that is actually perfect. So the idea of actually getting a watch that is perfect, I think is a little bit flawed. However, the idea of learning what you want out of a watch, what makes a perfect watch for you, is really, really worthwhile knowing. As I've been going on this watch collecting journey, I've been buying watches, selling watches, learning what I like, what I dislike, sort of really starting to understand what watches that stand out to me. What watches that when I get them that I think, wow, I love this watch. What watches do I buy? With what attributes do I buy that then stay in my collection longer term versus watches that I buy that I like, I wear for a little bit, but that they end up getting sold. As I collect more and more watches, I understand more and more what I'm looking for, or at least what I sort of find in watches that really excite me, that make me want to wear them over other watches, that make me want to keep them longer term than other watches. So I'm going to flip the camera around now because I'm going to demonstrate to you in two ways what it makes the perfect watch for me and what makes the perfect idea of a watch worthwhile having in your head. I'm going to do that in a couple of different ways. One, I'm going to feature a watch, but before I do that, I'm going to do it in a graphical form because I've been trying to figure out how to best explain this to you, and I think this is going to be the best way to do it. So let's flip the camera and let me show you how to find yourself the perfect watch. So rather than try and explain exactly what I'm trying to say, I'm gonna do it in a visual form. I think this is gonna be the best way to explain it because I think there is three factors that are required to find the perfect watch. And what are those three factors? Well, I often talk about head. Head being the logical side of things, the things that I want ticked off for a watch. It can change a little depending on the watch, depending on the style of watch, but it's things in my logical mind says, yes, I want that from a watch. I want this part of it. I want to look this certain way, have these certain attributes. And if they tick all those boxes of things that I want for that particular watch, then I tend to like it. But I don't always love it. And that's when heart comes into it. I think having an emotional connection to a watch is really important, and it really does make a watch stand out to me. It doesn't actually need to tick every box on my sort of logical brain for me to love it, to have that emotional connection. But when I come across watches that have head and heart, tick all my logical boxes, but I also absolutely love and they overlap, well, that tends to make a really good watch. And most of the watches that I absolutely love in my collection tend to fit into that. But that doesn't make it the perfect watch. There's missing one more step. And that is what I call one watch. That is when I sort of think about what is the perfect one watch for my collection? If I was only allowed to have one watch in my collection, what would it look like? What would it be? And if a watch ticks that box of, yes, this is my ideal watch, my only watch if I was only going to have one, yes, it ticks all these logical head boxes, yes, I'm absolutely emotionally connected to it and I absolutely love it, well, then it fits into this little section here then, doesn't it? And it becomes, for me, as close to the perfect watch as, I'm, as I can possibly come across. So now we're looking for a watch that fits all of these and fits into this little X. From a head perspective, we are looking to tick off the looks, fit and finish, price, movement, size, and wow factor. This one is actually fairly important, and I'll come back to this one when I start talking about a particular watch. But not only does it tick off all these boxes, and those boxes do change depending on the watch, but I have an emotional connection to it, and that becomes important. But it also ticks that one watch box, that one watch in my collection. If I was only ever to have one watch, if I was only allowed to have one watch, what would it be? Now we get into what we're talking about, the perfect watch. Now let me bring out a watch to explain what I mean. Now for me, this Christopher Ward is as close to perfect as I could come across. Now I'm not trying to sell this watch to you saying this is the perfect watch, everybody should buy it. No, this is an example, but it's the closest that I've ever come to picking up a watch and thinking, wow, 
that thing is almost perfect because it ticks that one watch thing for me, a black dial diver. I have known for a long time that if I was only to have one watch in my collection, it would be a black dial diver. This one ticks the head box as well. We've got a lovely movement. Fit and fish is, finish is absolutely stunning. It has a great size to it, 40 millimeters, and it has a lot of wow factor to it as well. There is things going on about this watch that really impress me, that really draw my attention in. And it ticks that heart box for me because as soon as I pick this one up, I can literally hold this one in my hand, close my eyes, and I know I love it because it just feels good. But then I look at it and I love the look of it. And then on wrist, it looks absolutely fantastic. So that then becomes the perfect watch for me or as close to perfect as I can get. But it's not so much about, yes, I've now found the perfect watch. It's more about identifying why I think this is the perfect watch or a perfect watch. What are the things about it that stand out to me? The quality, the fit, the finish, the price, the affordability, that sort of emotional connection. And a black dial diver, well you can't go too wrong with a black dial diver. That to me makes a perfect watch and that makes me a better collector of watches because I now know all these things about watches that I like, that I want, that I want in my collection and I can actively target those features. Whether it be looking for something that fits my heart box, something that I have that emotional connection, thing that fits my head box, things that I want to tick off, things that I really want out of a watch, I can tick those off. And if I can find something that is also a black dialed diver, not that I need that many black dialed divers, well then I know that I'm going to absolutely love it. Now guys, what do you think about this? Has this sort of helped you sort of pick up what might be a perfect watch for you? Possibly not. I'd love for you to leave a comment below. And if you like this video, maybe you want to check this one out next.